Hi, I'd like to talk through um, the mistakes I made building this, my first cigar box guitar. Um, I say there are ten mistakes, but really um, it's a mixture of mistakes and things that went wrong, and there are more than ten. Um, but I've made a list and I'll go through them. Um, related to something that I got wrong before, um, the strings aren't earthed, so I'm just going to put a piece of copper tape from around where the strings hold down at the tail and the ground of the, the jack socket. Um, so once I've done that, well I'll have to take the strings off to do that, so it's a good opportunity for me to show you inside. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've put a bit of copper tape on there between the jack and the, where the strings go over the tail and hopefully that will ground them enough. It was buzzing a bit with mains hum. Um, right, so mistakes are made. Um, well, I suppose first I should go through a key mistake was my choice of materials. The box I got from a local tobacconist down in Castle Nuovo. Um, he looked at me a bit gone out when I asked him if he'd got any boxes and tried to describe what, it, what I wanted it for, because my Italian's lousy still. Um, but lovely box, proper Havana cigar box with Italian health warnings. Um, but um, the biggest mistake was my choice of wood for the neck. Um, I used bit of um, reclaimed chestnut wood. There were some barrels in the cantina here um, that were past it for use of as barrels um, but I've found an awful lot of uses for since including a guitar, electric guitar body. Uh, it's not exactly tone wood, but it's, you know. Um, the only problem is it's rather well seasoned you might say probably a hundred years to a long seasoned, with the result that the grain is very weak along, along its length. Which, well, I'll come back to that. Uh, first, the construction. I've, it's through the body, the neck, um, but I recessed it down so there's a good space so that the top can vibrate happily. Um, I've lined the inside of the, the box at the back with some thin strips just to give it a bit of extra support. Um, and yeah, single piece going through, corner pieces, and um, the neck, the head did continue from the same piece of wood as the neck. But my first problem, as I was, I think it was when I was carving out the recess, uh, managed to snap it there. And that was down to the shearing of the wood. It was just, it's just so weak in that direction. Um, but I continued and, because I, I, I think I'd already taken down the neck using a spoke shave and a bit of sanding and so a bit of epoxy glue and I've put a screw through so that's relatively sturdy now and so um, that was my first mistake which led to that problem and the next was a stupid error I made when drawing it up. I got the scale length of a Strat style electric guitar and when I did the measurements for the head I misjudged it and I'd taken it from the wrong side of the head if you see what I mean and so rather that line I'd take I should have taken it from that line rather than that line with the result that it ended up the measurements were out um, making making it 
about a fret. A fret's worth longer than uh, a, a, a Stratocaster would be. Which, luckily, the strings are still long enough to go up, but um, that was a pain. It caused some problems, that. Um, so, next thing was a result of my choice of wood. Um, when I put it together, I, I tried to do it with the materials I had. I was skinned, and um, so hacked together a head like this. Um, these bits on the end are bits of boxwood, epoxied to recess nut, and in the middle of the the threaded part, I drilled, uh, I think, a one millimetre hole, which was just big enough to get the ends of the strings through. And you know, it kind of worked, um, but the problem was the weakness of the wood and having a very lively little dog, Claudio, uh, who kept knocking it over, with the result, smash. Here's a, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, he said hello. Um, shush, you can be quiet now. Shush, you, waggy waggy. Come here. Wait, come here, come here. Okay, back to this. Um, so, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, so the, the head split off. Um, and that wasn't actually the next mistake I made. Um, here's a lovely one that I made with the... Oh, putting it together, assembling it. That was a mistake in the way I joined it up there. The box, I made it a bit too snug and the box doesn't perfectly fit. It's pushed out a little bit so I've got a little gap. Um, but I don't think it's anything more than minor cosmetic. Um, a beautiful little mistake I made with the neck. Um, this wood, when it was cleaned up, you can see the kind of colour it was. Um, it had a pro I should have just used varnish on it. I ended up putting, using linseed oil, but you know that's fine, the linseed oil worked out okay. The mistake I made though was um, doing the markers along the neck. Um, I drilled them out, drilled out little holes, dowel pegs, cut flush. Now the wood of the neck, it's chestnut, which is high in tannin. And there's a lovely little trick using um, wire wool and vinegar. Just leave some wire wool to soak in vinegar overnight and then paint it on any wood with high tannin and it goes, well, that colour. Anything from that colour down to black. And um, because I know the chestnut's high in tannin, the dowel I was using, I think, uh, was something like birch, I thought, which I thought would be low in tannin, hence no problem. Uh, they'd show up light, whereas the chestnut would go dark. Unfortunately, it didn't come out quite like that, so they're virtually invisible. Um, and, right, so the construction still. Up to this point, I was still sticking to the minimal what I had at hand. Um, so I'd only, the only bits I'd actually spent any money on were um, the potentiometer, jack socket and knob, which I had knocking around anyway. And I made the pickup. The pickup from... That's just a scrap of ebony drilled out. Those are sawn off nails. There's a little cardboard former I made. It's a bit loose, I don't want to break the wires. Um, cardboard former I made, wrapped it with wire that came from a, a, a motor that was knocking, an old motor that was knocking around. Quite thick wire, something like, oh, thin guitar string thickness, but relatively thick for a, um, a pickup. 
maybe a few, a few hundred turns, perhaps four or five hundred turns around there. Underneath um, there's a, a magnet, the kind of horseshoe shaped magnet out of a, a dead hard drive. Really powerful, one of those rare earth magnets. And um, it, it's because it's low turns, it's very low impedance and um, relatively low output. But neither of those have proved to be a problem. Um, okay, next mistake. Oh, this was actually a, a so I'd got it glued together and stringing it up. This was before I did the, some of the other things, and I got the angle of that wrong. So I had to trim that back so I'd got a decent angle over the strings. That was something to watch out for. Similar thing here, I, um, I got my measurement slightly out somehow. Oh, that was it. And I, I cut to, did my recess down to the edge of the box rather than the edge of the top. So I had to put a little filler of that. It's just another scrap of ebony there uh, that fixed it all right. Yeah, I mean, I should say that all the problems that I had, I was able to get over um, and worked out fine. Um, Construction-wise, the sound holes, um, I had a look online for, um, search for sound hole ones. These are loosely based on cello ones. I tried printing them off, but couldn't get one that was the right size. You know what it's like printing images trying to get them the right size so ended up sketching it then going over the sketch in um, black marker pen then and that got it more or less how I wanted it then laminated that drawing and then cut which made it more a much better shape because now I could see I'd got the drawing to go by and the coloured in drawing to go by Cut that out of the laminate, which gave me a nice little, relatively sturdy template that I'd put down on one side one way up, put down on the other side the other way up. Result, sound holes. When it came to carving out the sound holes, another mistake. Um, I do a bit of wood carving, so my, the tools I automatically picked up were wood carving gouges, which was a mistake, so I was tapping through to cut along these edges. Mistake, I should have just got a, a fret saw and gone along with, with that. Um, to make it a little more pleasing, b before it was a bit ugly around the edges, so I went around the inside of the sound holes where I'd cut them out with a black marker, just a little aesthetic thing. Speaking of which, uh, although I'd used um, linseed oil on the neck, um, which is lovely for general woodwork, I really like it. For this, probably not the best thing. The body, the box, I sprayed with some off-the-shelf acrylic, well, it called it acrylic coat. It, it, to me, it just looked like regular enamel car spray kind of a varnish. Uh, sprayed the body with that, and it bubbled up, like went crackler, which, when I did it, I was really annoyed about it, but since, the effect's quite nice, actually. It gives it a bit of a, a worn look. Whether that counts as a mistake or not, I don't know. I'm quite happy with it. It doesn't bother me. Um, so, the other thing was sorting out the neck problem. Rather a major problem. I ended up just... That's how it was. Just sawing it off. There. Um... I'm actually using the zero fret technique for the nut. Instead of having a nut up there, it's a separate piece. Um, this bit of sawn off screw um, just sits there to act as a, a string tree, keeping the strings in the right positions. And the, the first fret is behaving as if it was a nut, um, which I made a mistake with. I should have practiced sawing the frets out first um, because I got that way out of line uh, just using a junior hacksaw and should have used a fret saw I guess um, got it way out of line but was able to pretty much straighten it by padding it out with a bit of epoxy glue um, the head just over there 
a big branch of an apple tree broke off a few years ago. So I got some nicely seasoned, nice coloured fruit wood, which whipped it on the bandsaw and did a bit of whittling at the back, sanded down. And that I've used the spray varnish on. And that, that's a lovely finish. I'm really pleased with that. And so it's got a bit of a Frankenstein head, but by this time I'd got the pennies to get hold of some electric guitar machine heads, so they went on. And uh, I may just about be getting to the end of the mistakes. Oh, tuning it up, that was a bit of a mistake. Initially, I was trying the um, GDG tuning using the strings from a guitar, the uh, second, third, no, third, fourth, fifth strings from an electric guitar. So A, D, G from electric guitar and tuned to G, which on a regular length neck would have meant it was just slightly marginally um, looser. Uh, but on this, because of that extra length, extra inch or so length, uh, it was tighter which added to the stresses, which no doubt had a hand in breaking that. Um, anything else to say at this point? Mm. Oh, there's a bit of a support for the, by the bridge, is just so it doesn't press down too much. And, right, well, I'll put the strings back on and show you what it sounds like. Back in a minute. So, strung it up, and, oh yeah, I've got, at the nut, I've got the strings, regular guitar strings, electric guitar strings, uh, looped around, those are masonry nails there, um, that were just kind of quite nice to look at, so use those. And my bit of copper tape, it looks like I got it in the right position, so now the strings are, will be earthed. Um, acoustically, that yeah, sounds fine. Um, still getting used to the tuning of these things. It, I'm going for the standard G D G, or perhaps so this is probably about tone lower than that, but around there anyway. That's the same shape. Um, into an amplifier. Now I mentioned that the output of this pickup was pretty low, but that's not a problem. Um, just for example, using this little amp here. If I whack it on the overdrive setting, turn it up, the gain's fine for this pickup, and so still getting some overdrive on it. It's a bit naff without the overdrive, but there we go. So there you have it, my first cigar box guitar and the take home message is even though loads of things went wrong I was able to continue. I didn't want to throw away that nice box so I was, but I was able to fix everything up and I wound up my first attempt at it and I wound up with a perfectly playable instrument So, and it's really good fun so I'd strongly recommend it.